tremendously. You have likely heard the terms health and wellness before. Most people believe these are synonyms for one another, but in reality, they are very different. Let's have fun in learning more about health, wellness, and illness. As an aspiring health student, health is at the center of life. Every part of their life relies on having good health. Without good health, they have nothing. Knowing health and illness, you learn to analyze, evaluate, and where appropriate, take actions to enhance the well-being of individuals, communities, and society. You are challenged to think critically about a range of personal and societal health-related perceptions and practices. Health is a fundamental right of every human being. It is a state of integration of body and mind. It is a much sought after state, a highly desirable state for most people, and yet at times, it remains elusive for some people. Across the lifespan, man moves from the health spectrum to the illness spectrum. Some people think of themselves as healthy and well if they are not ill, and ill if they are not well. However, there is no exact point at which health ends and illness begins as both are a relative in nature. So for this session, we will be discussing about the health, wellness, and illness and three levels of prevention. At the end of this session, you will be able to apply behaviors that promote health and wellness, describe strategies for prevention of diseases including the health screenings and examinations, identify dimensions of wellness, models of wellness and levels of prevention, develop and apply a plan for group work that integrates aspects of group dynamics, communication, conflict management, and strategies for promoting group members' well-being and academic performance, discuss complementary and alternative health practices, examine the different dimensions of health, propose ways by which illness can be prevented, and identify and discuss the practical implications of health, wellness, and the role of the different public health stakeholders from international to local levels. So let's start with by discussing what is health. So according to World Health Organization, it is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So health is individually defined by each person. So what does this mean? So on a person personal level, individuals define health according to how they feel, absence or presence of symptoms or illness, and the ability to carry out activities. So others, uh, they define health as the state of being free from illness or injury. It is also uh, the ability to maintain the homeostasis. And when we say homeostasis, it refers to any process that living things use to actively maintain fairly stable conditions necessary for um, survival. So we have this term um, negative feedback mechanism in order to stay healthy and when we say negative feedback mechanism it occurs when some functions of the output of a system process or mechanism is fed back in a manner that tends to reduce the fluctuations in the output whether caused by changes in the input or by other disturbances so an example of this one for a negative feedback mechanism we have here um, human, for example, a human blood pressure. So if a person has an increase in blood pressure, so in order to uh, be healthy in the process of homeostasis um, in accordance with the negative feedback mechanism, so of course, um, if there is an increase in blood pressure, so signals are sent to the brain from, of course, blood vessel. So from these signals um, or from the brain, so signals are sent to the heart from the brain 
Okay? So, from these signals that is being brought uh, to the heart from the brain, of course, there's already a decrease in heart rate. And if there is a decrease in heart rate, of course, um, the blood pressure will already normalize. Okay? Another example, um, production of RBC. So when we see RBC, this is a uh, red blood cell or the process um, of, um, of the production of the red blood cells. Uh, the medical term for that one is erythropoiesis. Again, so erythropoiesis is a process of the production of the RBC. For example, there is a decrease in oxygen in our body. So what will happen in order to normalize this oxygen level in our blood? So of course, the kidneys will, det will detect that there is a decrease in oxygen in our body. So from kidney, it will secrete um, a hormone called erythropoietin. Okay, so from this uh, hormone, it will already increase the production of RBC. And as we all know, RBC is the one who carries um, oxygen. So since there is an increase in RBC already in the blood vessel, of course, there's already an increase in oxygen uh, level in our blood. So that is um, an example of um, negative feedback mechanism. Okay, so moving forward. So now let's define what is wellness. So when we say uh, wellness, it is a state of well-being. So basic aspects of wellness include self-responsibility, an ultimate goal, a dynamic growing process, daily decision-making in the areas of nutrition, stress management, physical fitness, preventive health care, and emotional health, and most importantly, the whole being of the individual. All right. So, why does wellness matter? So, maintaining an optimal level of wellness is absolutely crucial to live a higher quality life. Wellness matters because everything we do and every emotion we feel relates to our well-being. And in turn, our well-being directly affects our actions and emotions. It's an ongoing circle. Therefore, it is important for everyone to achieve optimal wellness in order to subdue stress, reduce the risk of illness, and ensure positive interactions. So wellness is an active process of becoming aware of and making choice toward a healthy and fulfilling life. And wellness is more than being free from illness. It is a dynamic process of change and growth. Have you ever wondered what the relationship between health and wellness is? On the surface, two very similar concepts, but fundamentally very different. Health is a description of a state that someone's in. She's healthy or he has had his health restored, meaning they don't currently have an injury or illness to contend with. But wellness is all about the way you think and how you view your choices. Wellness is the mindset to choose to grow and nourish and thrive, which is why we call it the wellness mindset. Wellness is actively and consciously choosing to be the best version of you possible, to evolve even just a little bit. You need wellness to have health. So if you're lacking a bit of health at the moment, wellness will help you get it back. And if you've got health, wellness will help you optimize it. So it's win-win wherever you fit on this health wellness spectrum. When we choose wellness, we're choosing health. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, what you believe in, or what your current state of health is. We can all benefit from wellness. Our current system is a bit like an ambulance, sitting at the bottom of a cliff, ready to rush to our aid if we fall down. This definitely has a valued place in our society and has proven very effective. But we also need a preventative fence at the top of the cliff to stop us all before we fall, saving countless lives. 
This fence is the wellness mindset. And when we stop thinking from a sickness mentality and shift into a wellness mindset, that's when we experience some really positive changes in our lives. Hippocrates, the founding father of modern medicine, said, everyone has a doctor within him or her. We just have to help it in its work. The natural healing force within each and every one of us is the greatest force in getting well. And the way to help the doctor inside you is to nourish it with well choices. These choices quickly add up to have a big influence over the state of your health. We are made up of 50 to 100 trillion cells. If you won a million dollar lottery 50 million times over, then that's how many cells you would have won. And your cells constantly work hard. They are continuously dying, renewing and regenerating. And this process builds a new you every 7 to 10 years. You are literally not the same community of cells you were 7 years ago, or even a minute ago. 300 million cells are replaced within your body every single minute of your life. So bearing in mind that these intricate processes are happening non-stop within you right now, why wouldn't you choose to fuel this process with well choices to rebuild the best possible you? You are constantly regenerating, so it doesn't matter what you did last night, what you did this morning, or even 5 minutes ago, if you decide to start now. No one is too far gone for wellness. Anyone can make a fresh start at any time, as long as they choose it. Alright, so that is a short video in terms of the relationship of uh, health and wellness. Okay, so now let's deal with the dimensions of wellness. Okay, so first is the physical dimension. So when we say physical dimension, this is the ability to carry out daily tasks, achieve fitness, maintain adequate nutrition and proper body fat, avoid abusing drugs and alcohol or using tobacco products and generally practice positive lifestyle um, habits. So an example of this physical dimension is whenever a toddler just learning to walk um, is prone to fail and injure himself. So that is just a, a normal because uh, with the growth and the development of the toddler, um, it is a normal process. If they are learning to work, they are really prone of injury. Another example is the young woman who has a family history of breast cancer and diabetes and therefore is at a higher risk to develop these conditions and as we all know if uh, we have a family history of such diseases uh, there is a high probability that we can also acquire um, those kind of diseases another dimension is the social um, it is the ability to interact successfully with people and within environment of which person is a part to develop and maintain intimacy with significant others and to develop respect and tolerance for those with different opinions and belief. So, for example, if um, an adolescent who sees nothing wrong with smoking or drinking because his parents uh, smoke and drink, so because of uh, the social dimension in his own uh, perspective that is normal, but if the other one sees that smoking and drinking is bad, might as well that person will develop that um, smoking and drinking is bad. Another example, the person of Asian descent who uses herbal remedies and acupuncture to treat an illness because um, in the Asian countries, or not just Asian countries, in other countries, if that is their culture, that they use such herbal remedies, that is their be um, belief. Okay, that's for the social dimension. Next is emotional. It is the ability to manage stress and express emotions appropriately. Um, it is the ability to recognize and accept and express uh, feelings and to accept one's limitation. So here, for example, if you are taking your examinations, I believe some of you have butterflies in their stomach wherein they feel like they are having um, a diarrhea or um, whenever there is a recitation, um, their heartbeat goes fast. So in that emotional dimension, um it will express um the feelings all right so next is the intellectual dimension 
And under intellectual, it is ability to learn and use information effectively for personal, family, and career development. So it involves striving for continued growth and learning to deal with challenges effectively. So for example, as of the moment, uh, while you are listening uh, with this session, you are already um, learning, acquiring new information for you to become competent and to have uh, growth. And another example, if there is an elderly woman who has only a grade um, 3 education, so of course, if ever there are some diagnostics, uh, tests needs to be done, there is an explanation needs uh, to do for the elderly woman because uh, there's no um, information that was discussed um, from her during um, her education. So that's for the intellectual dimension. Next is the spiritual. So the belief in some force, nature, science, religion, or higher power that serves to unite human beings and to provide meaning and purposes to life. So it includes a person's own morals, values, and ethics. So examples are Roman Catholics require baptism for both live births and stillborn babies. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses are opposed to blood transfusion. So anything in terms of the religion, something like that. Next is occupation or occupational. So the ability to achieve the balance between work and leisure time. For example, um, as a person um, do his job in terms of his uh, work, um, he can also do some of his um, uh, pastime if ever that person has free time okay next is environmental so this is environmental so the ability to promote health measures that improve the standard of living and quality of life in the community so this includes influences such as the food water and air so example here is increased incidence of asthma and respiratory uh, problems in large cities with smog and that is a combination of uh, air pollution and uh, uh, fog okay anything that has um, to do with the uh, environment okay so we have now models of health and wellness so first is the clinical model so it is the narrowest interpretation of health and people are viewed as physiologic system which related functions and health is identified by the absence of signs and symptoms of the injuries so when we say the absence of signs and symptoms example if i feel um uh, cold uh, my, my head is heavy i am sick but if i don't feel anything um, I feel fine. I feel healthy. That is under clinical model. Next is role performance model. So health is identified in terms of the individual's ability to fulfill societal roles that is to perform his or her work. According to this model, people who can fulfill their roles are have, uh, healthy even if they have clinical illness. So example stated here is a man who works all day at his job as expected is healthy even though an x-ray of his lung indicates two more. So see, under the performance uh, role performance uh, model, even though this person has a two more, but then uh, this person uh, works all day, um, under the role performance model, he is healthy. But just in case uh, the person is unable to do uh, his or her task or um, his job, well, then the person is uh, clinically ill. Next is adaptive model. So health is a creative process and the disease is a failure of the adaptation and maladaptation. So the aim of treatment is to restore the ability of the persons to adapt, that is to cope. So according to this model, extreme good health is flexible, adaptation to the environment and interaction with the environment to maximum advantage. So from the word itself, adapt. So if a person is unable to adapt to the external environment and uh, that person will acquire illness under the adaptive model, the person is uh, has a disease.
Next is eudaimonistic model. So health is seen as a condition of actualization or realization of person's poten potential. So in this model, the highest aspiration of the people is fulfillment and complete development, which is actualization. So under this uh, model, eudaimonistic, if you are not actualized um, or did not reach the highest level, which is actualization, uh, you are not healthy. So agent host environment model. Okay, next is agent host environment model. So let's define agent host environment under this model. So um, agent is any environment factor or stressor such as biologic, chemical, mechanical, physical, and psychosocial that by its presence or absence, such as a lack of nutrients, can lead to disease or illness. And when we say host, these are person who may or may not be at risk of acquiring a disease. Example, uh, family history, age, lifestyle habits that influence the host reaction. And environment, these are factors external to the host that may or may not predispose the person to the development of the disease. So when we say agent, this is the what. Okay, so the agent is the cause of the disease. So when studying the epidemiology of most infectious diseases, the agent is a microbe. And when we say microbe, it is an organism too small to be seen with the naked eye. Um, agent are the disease causing microbes um, such as the bacteria, virus, fungi, and protozoa. And uh, they are what most people call the germs. And when we say host, this is the who. Okay, so hosts are organisms, usually humans or animals, which are exposed to and harbor a disease. The host can be an organism that gets sick as well as any animal carrier, including insects and worms, that may or may not get sick. Although the host may um, or may not know it has a disease or have any outward signs of illness, the disease uh, lodges inside the host. So the host heading also includes symptoms of the disease so different people may have different reactions to the same agent for example adults infected with the virus uh, varicella or the chicken pox uh, are more likely uh, than children to develop serious complication and for environment this is the where okay so the environment is a favorable surroundings and conditions external to the host that cause or allow the disease to be transmitted. So some diseases live best in dirty water, others survive in human blood. So still others like E. coli thrive in warm temperature but are killed by highest heat. So other environmental factors include the season of the year. Okay, so there are some seasonal, uh, for example, uh, during rainy seasons. Something like that, and that is more on the mosquito that carries the dengue virus. Okay, so that's under agent host environment model. So next is health illness continua. So health illness continua is a grid or graduate scales can be used to measure a person's perceived level of wellness. So health and illness or disease can be viewed as the opposite ends of the continuum. So from the higher level of health, a person's condition can move through a good health, normal health, poor health, and extremely poor health, eventually um, to death. So people move back and forth within this continuous uh, day by day. So um, as what stated um, in the health illness continuum, for example, this is the normal health. normal health so a person can move to illness or even to death depends on the situation or the other way around to good health up to high level wellness so again uh, this health illness continua uh, move back and forth day by day 
So there is no distinct boundary across which people move from health to illness or from illness back to health. So how people perceive themselves and how others see them in terms of health and illness will also affect their placement on the continuum. So we have done high level wellness grid. So we have X axis and the Y axis. So uh, X axis is the health and Y axis is the environment. So X axis uh, ranges from peak health to death. And for the Y axis environment ranges from very favorable to unfavorable portion. So done in 1959 described a health grid in which a health axis and an environment axis intersect. The grid demonstrates the interaction of the health or the environment with the illness wellness continuum. So as uh, this picture demonstrates, this is the uh, x-axis, this broken line. I mean, this is the y-axis rather. So from a favorable environment and up to the unfavorable environment. And this line here is the y or the x-axis so from peak wellness to death so from the first quadrant here quadrant one so protected poor health so in favorable uh, environment example through social and cultural dimensions from the quadrant two a high level wellness in favorable environment and for the quadrant three emergent high level wellness in favorable environment and for the quadrant four poor health in in unfavorable health so for the intersection of the two axes uh, forms quadrants of health and well wellness as what i've mentioned so for the quadrant one high level wellness is the favorable environment it's example here is a person who implements healthy lifestyle behaviors and has the biosocial spiritual and economic resources to support lifestyle so that's why um, th this person has a high level wellness in a favorable environment for the second quadrant emergent high level wellness in an unfavorable environment so example here is a woman who has the knowledge to implement healthy lifestyle practices but does not implement adequate self-care practices because of the family responsibilities uh, job demands or any other fa uh, factors so that's why um, there is an emergent but the environment is unfavorable next third quadrant protected poor uh, health in a favorable environment so an example is an ill person who needs are met by the healthcare system and who has access to appropriate medications, diet, and healthcare institution. And lastly, poor health in an unfavorable environment. So example here are the young child who is starving in a drought a uh, stricken uh, country for example uh, such as uh, a third world country wherein the healthcare delivery system is very poor uh, that's why their health is not being seen so um, that's why uh, their health is not taken care so next is the Travis illness wellness uh, continuum consists or composed of two arrows pointing in opposite directions and joined at a neutral point so the illness wellness continuum developed by travis ranges from high level wellness to premature death so the model is illustrates two arrows pointing in opposite directions and joined at a neutral point so to show you the diagram so this is the neutral point okay so from a premature death in he here portion and from highest level so movement to the right arrow towards the high level wellness equals an increasing level of health and well-being so can be achieved in three steps we have awareness education and growth and on the other side movement to the left on the arrows towards the premature death equates a progressively decreasing state of health and can be achieved in signs symptoms or disability 
So most important is the direction the individual is facing on the path. So if a person or if towards the high level health, a person has a genuinely optimistic or positive outlook despite his or her uh, health status. And if the if towards premature death, a person has a genuinely pessimistic or negative outlook about his or health status. And um, compares a treatment model with a wellness model. If a treatment model is used, an individual can move right only to the neutral point. Example, a hypertensive client who can um, take his medication without making any other lifestyle changes. Another, if, if a wellness model is used, an individual can move right past to the neutral point. For example, here, a hypertensive client who not only take his medication but stops smoking, loses weight, uh, starts an um, exercise program. So using this uh, grid or diagram, so if a person is taking medication plus doing uh, diet, exercising, of course, yeah, it will pass through the neutral point. But if a person takes the medication but does not follow uh, the diet, um, does not do such um, exercise, uh, that person is only here in the neutral point. So that's the Travis Illness uh, Wellness uh, Continuum. So now let's define what is um, illness. So when we say illness, it is a highly personal, highly subjective feeling of being ill. So how the person feels towards sickness and um, a highly personal state in which the person uh, feels unhealthy or may or may not um, relate, related to diseases. So um, illness is um, a state in which persons physical, emotional, intellectual, um, social, developmental, or spiritual function is diminished or impaired compared with previous experiences. So illness is not uh, synonymous with disease. So illness and disease are different to each other. Although health providers must be familiar with the different kind of diseases and their treatments, they are concerned more with illness. Uh, which may include disease, but also the effects of functioning and well-being in all dimensions. So now, what then is the disease? So disease can be described as an alteration in body functions resulting in the reduction of the capacities or the shortening of the normal lifespan. And um, you, I believe you've already heard uh, the word etiology. And when we say etiology, this is uh, the study of causes of the diseases. Okay, so the cause or set of causes or manner um, of uh, causation of the disease or uh, condition. So we have classifications of diseases and illness. We have acute and chronic illness. So acute illness is typically characterized by severe symptoms or uh, relatively short duration so um, examples of uh, acute um, illness we have um, let's say um, asthma uh, what else uh, we have um, burn or flu pneumonia something like that so it has uh, severe symptoms but of course in a short duration only and for chronic illnesses uh, is the one that lasts for extended period usually uh, six months or longer and often for the um, for the person's life so example here for uh, chronic illnesses uh, we have cancer diabetes arthritis um, what else uh, tuberculosis so those are uh, usually six months or longer or a lifetime or even hypertension okay so illness behaviors or coping mechanism involves ways individuals uh, describe monitor and interpret their symptoms take remedial actions and use the healthcare system 
So we have five stages of illness and health-seeking behavior by such man. Um, we, stage one, the symptom experience. So uh, the person responds emotionally and realize that the, realizes that there is a problem. Um, under uh, symptom experience, uh, the, there is a physical experience of the symptoms, the cognitive aspect, and the emotional uh, response. And for the stage two, yeah, um, they already uh, seek confirmation from the family or friends. For example, uh, they will ask if um, I have uh, a di an ill or if I have a disease. And with that, they will already do some uh, self-medication or self-treatment or they will ask um, what kind of medication they will take. For stage 3, so they will already seek the advice of health professional either on their own initiative or at the arguing of significant others. So they seek these types of information. So they already um, will ask uh, the explanation why they are experiencing those symptoms in, in a way that they can uh, better understand what is happening to them. And then they will validate um, if uh, what kind of the disease or illness they have. And of course, reassure uh, that they will be all right or prediction on what uh, will be the outcome. Then for the stage four, dependent client role. So the client becomes dependent on the professional for help. Okay, so what, whenever the health provider uh, provide such information, um, the person or the patient will already follow all those instructions. And of course, the stage five is the recovery or rehabilitation. So the client is expected to relinqu relinquish the dependent role and resume former roles and responsibilities. So here, uh, the patient or the client is already recovered. Um, they can already do uh, their activities of daily living. So preventing illness. So the goal of illness prevention program is to uh, maintain the optimal health by preventing diseases. So here are some of the activities by uh, Im immunization, prenatal and infant care for uh, mothers and toddlers or infants, and of course, prevention of some sexually transmitted diseases or any kind of um, illnesses or diseases. So the objective of illness prevention activities is to reduce the risk of illness for further complication, uh, to promote health habits, and of course, to maintain individuals' um, optimal functioning. So we have levels of disease prevention. So the first level is the primary uh, level or primary uh, prevention. So directed towards preventing the initial occurrence of the disease decreases the risk of exposure of individual and community to diseases. So example here is an, um, health education about accident or poisoning or any kind of uh, health education that will um, direct the towards uh, preventing initial occurrence of the diseases. Okay? So, what else uh, besides of immunization? Immunization is under uh, primary prevention, health education or so health teachings, um, environmental sanitations, uh, and provisions of adequate housing, recreation, and work conditions are all under primary prevention. So, as what I've mentioned, health education about standard um, nutrition, and growth and development, exercise requirements, stress management, protection against occupational hazard, immunization, risk assessment for specific diseases, family planning, and environmental sanitation um, for recreation, um, work conditions are all under primary prevention. For the secondary level, focuses on early identification of health problems and prompt intervention. So there's the per uh, there is already an intervention that will happen to alleviate uh, health problems. So includes prevention of complications and uh, disabilities. So um, example here are screening surve uh, surveys. So encouraging regular medical and dental examination, teaching self-examination for breast. So for these ladies, um, 
once you have uh, started your uh, menstrual cycle, you need to do a breast self-exam uh, once a month perhaps, perhaps uh, to check any lumps or any uh, nodules in, in your breast. And of course, for uh, gentlemen, we have testicular cancer, so there should be a testicular uh, self-examination. So assessing growth and development of the children, uh, maintaining skin integrity, uh, turning, positioning, exercising client, ensuring adequate rest and sleep, food and fluid intake, elimination, administering medical therapies such as um, medication. Next is the tertiary, uh, tertiary level. So it begins after illness. So when um, defect or disability is fixed or determined to be irreversible uh, focuses to help rehabilitate um, individuals and restore them to an optimal level of functioning within the constraint of disability. So example, referring client to support group, teaching diabetic client to prevent complications, uh, referring client to rehabilitation centers. Those are examples under tertiary levels. So we have uh, next is the behavior associated with the levels of prevention. So under primary prevention, uh, quit smoking, avoid alcohol intake, regular exercise, and eat well-balanced diet, reduce fat and increase fiber intake, take adequate fluid, maintain ideal body weight, complete immunization program, avoid overexposure to sunlight, and wear protective gear in anywhere you go. Most especially right now with the pandemic that we are experiencing, we need to uh, wear protective for us to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. Secondary, so we have uh, annual health examination, regular pap smear, uh, test for women. This is for uh, women um, who started menopausal. Then uh, monthly breast self exam for women uh, 20 years and up. But as what I've mentioned, uh, as early as um, you start for women who has um, a mens already can already perform breast self exam. For sputing examination for uh, tuberculosis to verify if uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis is found in the sputum. Then anal stool. Um, weight taste and rectal examination for client um, 50 years old and above to, to check for any um, abnormalities in terms of their prostate because for client especially for male 50 years old and above they are prone for prostate cancer so that's why they need to do yearly annual stool uh, weight test or rectal examination and lastly we have tertiary prevention so the first one is to self-monitor uh, their blood glucose among diabetic patient to prevent uh, further complication another example of self-monitoring is for hypertensive uh, client wherein they need to check regularly or monitor regularly their blood pressure then second we have physical therapy after cva so cva stands for cerebrovascular accident an example for this one are the stroke patient so as we all know if a person or a patient um, is stroke, they are unable to move some of their body parts, so they need to be referred to a physical therapist. And lastly, participate in cardiac rehabilitation after an MI. So MI stands for myocardial infarction. It is commonly known as heart attack. And for a patient or a client who had heart attack, they need to be referred to rehabilitation, particularly in the cardiac centers, to avoid further complications.